Hello everybody, welcome back to the Epic Flight Academy. Hey, we're talking about the instrument rating and so far we've talked about some requirements for the pilot. Now, today let's discuss some requirements for the aircraft itself. In specific, we want to talk about the documents, the inspections, and the equipment. Hi everybody, my name's Mike Thompson. This is Epic's instrument rating course and to be successful don't forget three key points number one study this material in epics online instrument course number two please watch these videos to supplement and support that content and number three very important review all of this with your flight instructor so welcome back. We're talking about the aircraft and its requirements. Well, let's get specific. Let's talk specifically about those documents. Now, I want you to review this very carefully with your flight instructor one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to see that we use a very common mnemonic and it's called Sparrow. This Sparrow mnemonic is shown on this slide right here. You see Sparrow spelled out in green, and then the yellow bullets are the first letter of each item that's important for us to understand in the aircraft's paperwork. Now, having said that, it's important that we don't just understand the mnemonic. As competent instrument pilots, we want to know where this mnemonic comes from. Well, folks, it is specifically referring to 91203 and 91.9. That's what you want to read and study and review with your flight instructor. So if we walk through that acronym, Notice the S in Sparrow stands for Supplemental Information, P is for Placards, A is for Airworthiness Certificate. A lot of this we've already studied in a previous Your Private Pilot course. R is your Radio Station License. The second R in Sparrow is your Registration. Then the O is our Operating Handbook. And then finally, Weight and Balance. Now, just because we've studied this before, we don't want to skip over it too quickly. Be sure to review that with your flight instructor. Now, it's a similar situation when we come to the second major category of documents that we want to make sure this aircraft is in compliance with. And there is another mnemonic, and that mnemonic is, and you can see it right here, A, Aviates. Once again, the mnemonic is only a memory aid. We need to be sure to study and read FARs 91409, 91207, and 91411, and review all of this in detail with your flight instructor. So the first A stands for, <clears throat> as you can see, airworthiness directives, and that means ensuring that the aircraft is in compliance with all of its applicable ADs. Secondly, its annual inspection. Thirdly, its VOR inspection requirements. And we're going to talk about that in a little more detail in just a moment. If we plan to use the VOR receivers in the aircraft to navigate under instrument flight rules, that VOR must have been checked within the last 30 days. Let's go into that in more detail in just a moment. Okay, the I in A aviates is actually, we think of it as the numeral one, and that stands for, and you can see that here, the 100 hour inspection. The second A is for the altimeter, the T for transponder, E for ELT, S for static system. Please review those with your flight instructor. Now, what about those VOR inspections? We said we'd look at that in a little bit more detail. If we are going to use the VOR to navigate in the IFR system, then it must have been inspected within the last 30 days. And again, you want to talk to your flight instructor about this, but on the slide here, you can see there are five specific ways to comply with 
that inspection. Number one is the ground check, two is the airborne check, three is the VOT slash VOR test facility. Number four is a dual VOR check. That means if I have two VOR receivers in my aircraft, I can compare them to each other. And then finally, number five, a bench test. So if I were to do an airborne check or a VOT, VOR check, where exactly can I do that? Hmm, big question mark over my head. Well, do you see on the slide here the chart supplement? That information will be found in this supplement and your flight instructor is going to help you locate that information. So we've talked about the aircraft documents and we've talked about aircraft inspections. Remember our third topic relative to the airplane was its equipment. And guess what? You got it, another couple of mnemonics. And guess what? You got it. Don't just memorize these mnemonics. These mnemonics simply remind me of what I've already studied and read about with my flight instructor. We have three mnemonics here. A, tomato flames. That's for VFR day flight. Flaps, that's for VFR night flight. And then grab card, that is for flight IMC in the IFR system. And our FARs are 91205, 91207. So having reviewed A, tomato flames and flaps earlier, let's just do a quick run through of grab card. And you can see that on the slide. The first G generator or alternator, you probably have an alternator. In other words, we have to have an electrical power source capable of supplying all of the power we're asking the aircraft for. Number two, rate of turn indicator, attitude indicator, the ball. Now, the ball refers to the inclinometer. Review this with your flight instructor. You probably don't have the old fashioned ball and an inclinometer. You probably have what we refer to as the hockey puck on the G1000, but you'll review that with your CFI. The C stands for clock, that is required. A is the altimeter and it must be pressure sensitive. R is radios, and then there's two Ds, directional gyro and DME. Now, review these requirements with your flight instructor. Uh, speaking specifically of DME, as you work with your instructor, you may find out, hey, wait a minute, we don't have a DME per se in our airplanes. Am I still legal? And the answer is, yes, you are still legal. We have an approved system suitable for GPS operations, and it is allowable for us to use that in place of DME. Again, your flight instructor will work with you on that. Now, I don't know if this thought is going through your head, but if it is, you're thinking ahead. You're asking yourself, hmm, what happens if some of this equipment fails? Or what if some of this equipment is inoperative? Can I still operate the airplane safely in the IFR system? And the answer is yes, but it depends on the equipment and it depends upon how this aircraft is maintained. Your reference here is 91213. You can see that on the slide. Review this with your flight instructor. At Epic Flight Academy, we have a flow chart that we help you flow through to make that go, no-go decision concerning inoperative equipment. Now, remember I said it also depends how the aircraft is maintained. If the aircraft is maintained using an MEL, what's that? My buddy Mel over here? No, MEL is minimum equipment list. Then disregard that flow chart and comply with the MEL only. Again, your flight instructor is gonna go through all of this with you in 
detail. Well, folks, that just about wraps it up for the instrument rating requirements for the aircraft. Please join us next time.